Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike. I'm back for Mobox, another graphics tutorial. This is very, very beginner rotoscope tips and tricks. So if you don't know what rotoscoping is, basically in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to cut out like a green screen background and it was really simple drag and drop and it worked perfectly. Sometimes you have to cut video out that does not have a green screen and that could be a complete nightmare if you could use a green screen i highly recommend it there's really not a lot of great options to do it without it but some uh some compositions that you want to maybe accomplish certain effects with you have no other choice but to hand do it yourself there's a number of different ways i'm going to show you the easiest way very beginner tutorial a lot of uh legwork that needs to get completed to do it but it's it's a very simple way for a beginner so i have this footage here i hope mkbhd doesn't uh doesn't pull this video but um this is uh, about four seconds from an iphone 7 video that he did and basically i just want to cut out his hand um with the phone in it very simply um to kind of remove the background and add my own background so this again it's very 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 simple um there's not a lot of motion his his fingers don't move very much there's just a little bit of rotation a little bit of scale a little position change um it's not a very complex thing to do for this example but maybe we'll do more complicated ones in the future but i'm just gonna um get started with this so first thing you're gonna want to do is create a new layer new null object and let me just turn my music down a little bit and so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this tracker tool to start out. If you don't have this tracker tool, go to Windows and then go to Tracker and it should pop out. When you select your footage, you're going to go to Track Motion. And for this example, you're probably going to track rotation and scale as well. So what this is going to give you are two points. What these points do is basically you want to put them in high contrast areas. And what they do is it tracks that portion, um, that position throughout time and it creates keyframes for that that you could attribute to this null object um, you, this might not be immediately uh, uh, immediately clear why we're going to do this yet but uh, i'll get into why um, in a second so you want to put these in two positions of of this footage that tracks this object in this hand so for this example we only need one tracker because his hand in the phone there's not a ton of motion, it's just a little wiggly, and it will help us mask the object later without doing too much legwork. So you're going to want to put these in high contrast areas, and you're going to want to put them um, somewhat far away, so that way you get a larger um, sight radius, I guess. So I'm just going to put these in the corner of the phone, so you can see here that uh, this little point is the center of the boxes, and I'm just putting it right in the center. What this box does is basically we're saying, I want you to find this little area in this larger area. So that way, um, you know, you can increase this, you can decrease it, but that's about that's about right. Um, so because there's a lot of contrast here, it will be very easy to track. And I'm just gonna basically be doing the same thing to the second point, putting it right in the corner there. And basically we're tracking this section in this box and that gives it us a nice, um, a nice long radius so that way we could we could see the phone rotating a little bit maybe coming scaling up and down and basically from here we're just gonna hit the play button now we could do it frame by frame and see how well it's tracking it and if it's not tracking it well we could we could you know help it along but uh, again this is a very easy track so I'm just gonna hit play and it will go through and track the motion of the phone throughout the video and then the video cuts off and it goes veering off um, but it ends about right here so um yeah we're just gonna hit apply well i'm gonna hit edit target first and make sure that this is set to null object and then i'm gonna hit apply x and y that's what i want and it went ahead and created keyframes so what i'm gonna do is once the screen goes black i don't want to capture any more of those keyframes um because i, I cut this from video on the internet um, i had to cut off the portion right after so I'm, i went ahead and cut cut those cut those off so i'm going to just do the same here you probably won't have this this problem but because my video cuts off that shape layer goes flying veering off into unintentioned directions 
So I'm just going to line that back up. So there it is. It's tracking the phone's position, scale, and rotation over time. All right, time for the next step. By the way, I don't know why it created all these points. I don't need those points, so I'm just going to delete them on the footage. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to lock this background so I can't move it. Um, I should probably lock this null object also in case I grab it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply grab a shape, the pen tool, and trace around this object. Now there are tools built now for After Effects to help you do this and to make it faster and smoother, but for this example, um, it just kind of makes it more trouble than it's worth and it's very processor heavy. This is a very simple way, there's not a lot of motion. So I'm just going to zoom in here and I am just going to very simply, very roughly track this hand. I'm also going to turn this layer visibility off so it makes it a little bit easier so it doesn't, uh, doesn't keep blocking my view. So the more accuracy you want, the more time you want to spend in making sure that this is perfect. Um, again, this is a very stupid example, but this is just a very simple one. If you have stuff like hair, this becomes extremely difficult. Um, and there's really not a ton of, of great options for you um, when it comes to rotoscoping. Um, but even the pros use this simple shape layer and tracking effect because quite simply, although it does take a lot of time and it is all hand done, not very artistic as another, um, as another fellow who makes tutorials said, but uh, it, it's, it's just sometimes when you're doing stuff like this, it just has to be done. And it's one of the things in, in After Effects that if you wanna get it done right, the automatic tools just simply aren't, aren't good enough, unfortunately. Um, sometimes they can be useful, but in examples like this, a lot of times they take too much time. And in more complicated examples, sometimes uh, more complicated examples, um, it just quite frankly isn't good enough. So that's kind of the unfortunate reality of the in-store in roto brush, brush. If you want to see a tutorial on the roto brush, um, just let me know and I'll and I'll be sure to do that. Um, this might be a multi-part series. I'm not sure. There are multitudes of different ways of doing this, but you know this is this is just the way that I unfortunately find to be the easiest. I wish there was a better way, but there just simply isn't um, in After Effects yet. I'll be honest. I've used Roto Brush a, a few times in professional projects though the results left a lot to be desired and so I think that it's something that I I want to I want to become more familiar with and learn more about so that way I could help you guys um, a little bit better instead of just making you aware that it exists um, by the way it, it, it's it's this busted button right here um, wrote a brush tool but uh, I, there it is that's that's where it is and if you want to mess with it you can but uh yeah it's, uh, I still got a, I still got a little bit to learn about that. So you can see around here, the phone is actually very shiny. So um, I kind of just have to guesstimate where, where the phone is there. It's not quite at the black um, because the edge is shiny. So again, this is just by hand going through. And I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more just in case the hand moves outside of the range of the shape. So there we go. Now we have the shape basically covering the entire hand and the whole, entire phone. You can see it's not quite perfect, but it's it's pretty close for this example. Um, one more thing that I want to do is on this shape layer, I want to right click, come to mask, new mask, press M on the keyboard, and I'm making that invisible again. And I basically want to mask this piece out because that piece um, for example, I'll show you, um, I'll, I'll, I'll finish masking it out later. I'll, I'll, I'll get to why I want to mask that out. Basically, I'm going to take this mask layer, which I'll, I'll call, um, roto mask. I want to pair this up to the, to the null object. Cause remember this null object has the movement. I'm going to come here to the footage, uh, 
uncheck the uh, the locking mechanism and click alpha mat and make sure it's underneath the roto mask. So you can see here that it cuts out his hand and the phone exactly how you'd expect. And because the roto mask is attached to the null object's motion, it moves with the with the motion of the video. Now again, his fingers aren't moving that much. If they were, you'd have to come in here to the roto mask, to the contents, to the shape, to the path, and you'd have to set path keyframes fixing issues that arise. So, for example, uh, let's see, why is that not uh, moving? So for example, let's say, let's say for example, his finger moved and we needed to, to move these keyframes. You, you, you can set keyframes for motion, um, but again, there's not a ton of motion here that requires um, that type of, of control. Now, you can see down here, it's not quite perfect, so we could, we could bring these a little bit closer just to, you know, get rid of that, the white background a little bit better. And again, this is all by hand, so really you can reshape these, these uh, you know, to your heart's content. Most people won't be able to tell because again, it's being sliced out. So, okay, let's get back to, to cutting this out. We set, a, we set a mask here, so I'm just gonna press M on the keyboard and get to my mask path. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to, uh, so I've got a real problem here where I'm having a real hard time changing this shape mask. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this simple. I'm just going to select this roto mask and I'm just going to follow the shape around. Again, this would be another spot where you might need to, you know, morph it over time if the shape of the hand, if his finger movements changed. Again, very simple tutorial right in here, so we're not gonna get into all those all those cases. But uh, yeah, so this now created our secondary shape here, which I can grab path information. So I'm gonna set a keyframe, copy the path, and come and paste it at the mask. I'm gonna hit that inverted. I'm just gonna delete the keyframes. We don't need the keyframes. So now I just mask that part out of that layer. So you can see now even the mat, even the mask follows the path. So there you have it. Now all you have to do is come in and drag in just a background or a shape layer. I, in fact, I'll just do a shape layer to make it simple. Layer new solid, that orange background again, and there you go. Now again, you might need to go through and make sure that all of all of the masks are perfect, so you might want to even come in here, set a keyframe for the shape layer, path, and come. And so start at the beginning and make sure that this is, is sticking with his hand. Even though we did set the, the keyframe, um, you know, not all the motion is going to be captured perfectly. So you could just come in through here. And the more points you add, the longer it takes. But again, like I said, it's all hand done. So, you know, if you want it to be right, you could do it right or you could do it <laughs> fast and lazy. So again, you know, these, these edges need to be cleaned up and depending on how much time you want to put in it, Basically, you would just keep adding pass to make sure you clean up these edges whenever it starts um, veering off a little too much. So that was just a quick look. Again, you could spend as much time as you'd like, but uh, this is a quick look at how to set keyframes and kind of quickly, simply add path information and rotoscoping of a very simple example very minimal motion, very minimal rotation to help, you know, cut something out of a video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, 
let me know and I will do a follow-up um, video on other techniques you could use. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.